This morning, indeed, I invite you to hear the words that God has placed on my heart for you and for me this day. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Lord God, as I come before you this day, I ask you to cleanse me, to wash me, to renew me, to restore me, to build me up, O God, where I have been torn down, and help me, O God, when I have fallen. Come this day, O God, that I might be your mouthpiece. God, cleanse me of all the thoughts and things that I have been dealing with this week so that I might deliver a word that you, des that you desire to be shared with and brought before these, your people, as well as unto me. So God, this day, I come before you asking you, O God, to build me this day that I might be your mouthpiece, your voice, in this time, on this day. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I ask you to just tarry with me for a little while. Just journey with me on the theme, the journey. The journey. You've already heard the passage so eloquently read earlier for you. So let us get to the word of the Lord. The journey. The passage this morning takes us back to that time when Abraham and Sarah are in the tent at Mambury at the Oaks of Mambury to be precise. And they are sitting there just uh, resting from their journey. They have been traveling, my brothers and sisters, for a long time. And in fact, if you and I were to go back and research from Genesis 12 to Genesis uh, 15, 18, where we are right now, it's been some 25 years that they have been on this trek. But it's not just any trek. They, 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 they have been on this trek because in chapter 12, Abraham is told that he and Sarah would have a child. 25 years ago, they have been told that a child would be born and that this child would be the remnants of the nations yet to come. And yet it's been 25 long years that they have been on this journey, on this trek, and no child has been found. No birth has occurred. In fact, my brothers and sisters, we don't have time for me to go back and, and take you through everything that has happened from chapter 12 to this present chapter that we are in at 18. But if we did, we would find out that Abraham and Sarah have struggled along the journey. They've gotten some things wrong. They have made some mistakes. They've made some decisions of their own will that was not of God. But these choices have not changed their relationship with God. God has remained by their side. And here they are sitting at this tent. Sitting at this tent and all of a sudden as they are sitting there, Abraham can see someone coming across the horizon. And as they arrive, he envisions the Lord's presence. He knows that there is something special about these three that have come before him this day. And knowing this experience from, from 25 years ago where the Lord has promised him a child, I can just imagine the excitement that would have been in his, in his, in his movements that day. I can understand why he, would, why he would offer them water to drink and he would prepare a lavish feast for them. I can imagine that he wanted to hear, what does the Lord have to say to me this day? I, I, I want to believe that he was excited about what this might mean, that indeed the Lord has come and brought the Lord's presence into his midst one more time. And he even uses the word that in your favor, he knows that, that this is something unique and something special for him and for Sarah. And so he lavishes all of, the, all of the things that would be given to a guest that is welcome into their community. And the guests ask him, as he's preparing the lamb, he's preparing the bread, he's preparing the food, they ask him, where is Sarah? Sarah is not off on the, not out of the scene, but Sarah is brought into the scene. And he asks, where is Sarah? And, and, and Abraham says, she's, she's here. And then, and then the, 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 the guests tell him that indeed they remind him of the promise. Some 25 years ago, they remind him of the promise that indeed that he shall have a child, that Sarah in, in the upcoming season will give birth. 
And I can imagine the elation that was still probably resonating in Abraham's spirit, maybe still a little bit of questioning because it's been 25 years. But then Sarah, Sarah who can overhear the conversation, Sarah chuckles, she, she, she laughs, the scripture says. She, she has an utterance that is one that says to, to those who are speaking, that there's some questionable doubt. There's some reason to say, I don't know if things are going to change because it's been 25 years since the first promise was made. And now you're saying that, that I will have a child in the midst of a time, in the midst of a time when my childbearing years are long gone. And I can just imagine her standing there off to the side and having this sense of concern, this sense of saying, I just don't know. I don't think that's possible. And then the guests turn to Sarah and they say to Sarah, Sarah, why did you laugh? Why, why did you question what, what I have spoken? And Sarah, as the scripture says, out of fear, I want to believe out of fear that, that she says, I did not laugh. Her immediate response on this, on this context is to say, I did not laugh. And then the angel says to her, but you did, but you did. And yet I understand, I understand how Sarah would laugh. I, I understand how, how, how Abraham would want to hear a word from the Lord. It has been 25 years of a journey, 25 years of trekking across thousands of miles, hundreds of miles of desert and raising your tent and putting your tent down and creating your own sense of what you think the Lord would have done or you're stepping in cases of doing the Lord's work for the Lord, that, that at this point to hear a word from the Lord was just one that would have been wanted, but one that also would have been one that would have said, I just don't know. Why? Because it's been 25 years, 25 years on the journey. And this week, my friends, this week today, we have buried one George Floyd and all of the protests that have been going on throughout our nation and around the world have been loud and clear. And I want you to know why have those protests been loud and clear? Because it's been 400 years since the first slave ship came over to these United States of America that blacks have been trying to say that our lives matter, that blacks have been trying to say that we do not want to have a knee on our neck, that we do not want to have this land of opportunity yet be limited to us, and yet that has been the case. Yet that has been the case for over 400 years. The journey, my brothers and sisters, has been long. The road has been difficult. Yes, there's been some small victories, but we have as 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 we have a long way to go. We have a long way yet to get there. And yet in the midst of all of these protests and all of the words being spoken, I want to believe just as Abraham did. I want to believe that there is a need to rejoice today. There is a need to welcome in God's presence because change is yet to come. Yes, God made a promise to Abraham and Sarah. God had made a promise to you and to me. God has made a promise to black America. God has made a promise. And yes, our time is not God's time. And it seems like, and it has been for us a long time. But I want you to know that God is still going to honor God's pr promise. What God said, God will do. God is going to do. It may feel right now that we've still got more work to do, and that is no doubt in my mind. There is still more work that we have to do. Abraham and Sarah will still have to pick up from this place at the Oaks of Mamre, and they will still have to move on for another year. Yes, today we may have some great changes in this nation or when it comes to policing and when it comes to how we treat those who are people of color in this nation. But we still have a ways to go. Our work is not done. We cannot rest because the protests may slow down. We cannot rest because George, George Flood has been placed into the precious ground of the earth and, and ascended up to his father. No, there is still work for us to do. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King once said, the ark of the moral covenant is long. 
But he said that justice will come. My friends, I want you to know that justice is what we are seeking. Justice is what is commanded. Justice is what is demanded. Yes, this is a time. This is a time in which we live right now, right here, today, in a place where we can be the difference maker in the world. Yes, the journey is not over. Yes, the journey is yet long. But my friends, the arc of the moral covenant may be long, but it still bends toward justice. And so I am saying to you today, don't let the, the next week and the next two weeks and the next three weeks be a time of saying the work is done, the work is completed. No, we must stay vigilant just as Abraham and Sarah had to stay vigilant. This reminder to them by the angels on this day, the voice of the Lord coming to them was a reminder for them to stay, to stay vigilant because God's promise was not done. God's promise would be fulfilled. God's promise would be made whole. Likewise for you and for me, for each and every one of us, God's promise will be made whole. It will be made true. It is a matter of whether you or I will stay in the journey, whether you and I will continue to walk the road for justice, whether you and I will still walk the roads for equality, whether you and I will still walk the roads that say poverty is not allowed, whether you and I will walk the roads that says that, that our prison complex needs to go away, whether you and I will walk the road that says we will love our neighbor more than we love ourselves, whether you and I will stay on this journey is the message for you and me today. That is what God is asking you and me to do. God is saying, stay on the journey. Don't give up. Even though it seems like sometimes that you don't know which way to go. Even though at times it feels as though it's a long lost cause. But I want you to know the journey is not over. This day, this moment, in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I call upon you. I call upon me to stay in the journey. This is the journey of the Lord is calling us to. Go forth, my friends, this day. Go forth in the name of the one who calls each of us by name. Go forth and do the work of justice. Amen.